introduction to subnetting. So we're now starting to move through the routine topics for the IC and D1 exam. And one of the main topics in the exam is subnetting. Now a lot of people think that subnetting is difficult to master, is, is, is hard, but in reality, like anything with math, once you know the process, once you know the method to use on how to subnet and um, in math how to solve equations, it becomes easy. The f now the, f the, f the next three to four videos, we will, will, will be focusing on subnetting strictly. This video is just an introduction to how to subnet. It just a, it talks about why we, we need to subnet um, and just kind of like the the general principles behind why we subnet and the kind of planning we have to go through. The next two to th to th the next two to three videos, that's when we will actually go into the maths on how to subnet um, and how to subnet in binary and how to subnet in decimal and what variable length subnet masking is. So the first question is why do we need to subnet and the reason is because we're running out of IP, IP version 4 addresses. IP version 4 when it first came out as a protocol the creators of IP version 4 um, only created 4.3 billion IP version 4 addresses. Now back at that time that seemed like a lot. Um, when the internet first came out um, not a lot of companies were, were connecting to the internet um, and any companies that, that um, did were normally very large companies and the, there wasn't that many devices being connected to, to the internet which meant that, um, that at that time there, the creators didn't imagine that there would be an address shortage problem since 4.3 billion is such a large number. However, during the late 1980s, there was, a, there was a dramatic growth in the internet. We had more companies starting to use the internet, starting to share their resources and services online and on the web. And because of the, the rise of the internet and the popularity of the internet increased, we saw more and more devices connecting to the internet, more and more IP addresses being handed out. And due to the inefficiency of classful networks and classful masks, there was an address shortage problem. So, as an example, um, the first few companies that um, that that connected and embraced the internet, they were assigned class um, whole chunks of class A IP addresses. So, class A blocks. Now, class A blocks contain a massive number of usable host IP addresses. What 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 would happen? Um, a, let's say um, company X would be assigned a class A block. And 90 to 95 percent of those addresses wouldn't be used. So we had a massive wastage of IP addresses by the original companies that embraced the internet because they were assigned massive blocks of addresses and they didn't use all of the IP addresses that had, that had been assigned to them. And so this is this caused a inefficiency. I mean, like if if you think about it now, just per household. Uh, most households have got about six to seven devices which connect to the internet. All of those need to have an IP address. And so you, you think about 4.3 billion um, I, um, IP addresses available, that isn't merely enough. I mean like um, there's more people on earth than there is IP version 4 addresses. So even if, one, even if only each person had one single device, we will still run out. We will still run out of I, 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 IP addresses. Now, the 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 creators of, of IP version four didn't think that the internet would grow to the scale that it is now. So, during the eighties and nineties, they came up with solutions in order to extend the the, the life of IP version four, whilst a permanent solution was um, worked on. So, the four well, the three main solutions to this um, problem was to subnet. Use NAT and use private addressing. So the way it worked, maybe this is our company, this is our household with connection to the internet. Okay, within our company, we would use private addressing. So I talked about private addressing in the IP version 4 protocol video, and all private addressing is it's addresses, so IP version 4 addresses which are reserved for use within a company. When you want to go out to the internet and and access a a public resource you can't use private IP addresses. Private IP addresses are site local, so are local to your enterprise network, and um, they, they can be used so um, within that enterprise network, within your own local area network. So 
and you can think of I uh, as private IP address and the IP addresses used inside your house so um, as an example it um, if you open up your command prompt and type in IP config you would see that your device most devices in the most home devices in the world will be assigned an, an IP address like 192.168.0. something, and so uh, or 192.168.1. or something. They're the common private IP addresses. So private IP addresses were used for devices within our own company. Then, when it came to accessing the internet, we needed to have a public IP version for address. Now, it wouldn't make sense for each device to have a public IP version for address because then we're not saving on IP addresses. We're still having the same problems that they faced in the 80s, in which um, each device needed a, a public IP version for address. And um, because of that, we were starting to run out of IP, IP addresses. So what they did instead, they came up with something called NAT, Network Address Translation. Now we'll go more into NAT in, um, later on in the series, but to understand the fundamentals of NAT, all NAT does is that as, as your, your devices with private IP addresses want to communicate with a device outside, so a device on the internet, traffic will obviously flow to your router. Now your router does some sort of magic and he translates so it changes these private IP addresses into a single public or a single few public IP addresses. Now these, these IP addresses are assigned to you by the ISPs. And because of subnetting, the ISPs don't have to assign you a whole class A, B or C block. They can assign you a portion of a class A address, a portion of a class B address or a portion of a class C address. So as you can see, these three... Um, Solutions all work together in order to extend the life of IP version four, and just and, and just so that you know that the way it works is that this is a re, a region internet r registry. The way that IP addresses are assigned is that um a, a whole block of IP addresses is assigned from your regional internet registry to your ISP. Uh, sorry, it's assigned from the um, IANA to a regional internet registry. Um, so a, a let's say a class a, a a portion of a class A B so a class A B or C block, then your region internet registry would assign um, portions of th of that address block to your ISPs. ISP a bit clearer regional internet registry, and then your ISPs would assign portions of the of that of the address block that they've been assigned to companies and customers such as homes. Um, small offices, home offices, big enterprise companies, large enterprise companies, so all that, all that sort of thing. So as you can see, these are all, all these three work together to extend the life of IP version four. We use private addressing, we translate private into one or a few public IP addresses, and we'll talk about that in a later video. And we, and then we can save on the amount of, on the, on the um, number of IP addresses that we assign to companies and to ISPs. By using subnetting, so instead of having to assign a whole class A, B, or C block, we can we can assign a portion of that A, B, or C block. Now, the final solution um, would be to use IP version six. So IP version six is the next revision of the IP version four protocol. It supports much more addresses than IP version four does, and eventually, once all IP version four addresses have been assigned and uh, have been used, every home, every company will then start to convert to IP version 6 so we'll start to see IP version 6 everywhere when that's going to happen I'm not too sure but you could put it's, it's, it's 2018 now so you can probably expect that over the next few years IP version 6 will start to become more and more popular and the good thing about IP version 6 it works very similar almost identically to IP version 4 and there are much more addresses which means that we won't have this problem um, of, of, of running out of IP addresses because the share amount of IPv6 addresses we have available to us is huge. So, like in the previous slide, we need to use some nets because by default, when we use default class for rules, so when we use a class A IP address with a class A mask, or a class B IP address with a class B mask, or a class C IP address with a class C mask, we will, we will always have um, a waste of IP version 4 addresses. So as an example, let's say a small company has got one 100 devices. Um, if, we were, if we were using class 4 rules, we would assign um, a class C, um, a, a class C block to that um, 
company. So we could say, okay, you can use all IP addresses. Um, so we're assigning you this block, 190 And uh, the thing is, is that he that yeah, that does meet his needs. Um, so he can. So he he he's got 100 devices. Um, cl that class C address supports 254 hosts. However, we're wasting about 154 host. Um, I IP addresses by signing that company or that yeah but that small business that classy block so by using class of rules it results in a waste of IP addresses wouldn't it be better if, if we could like use instead of using these default subnet masks we could use custom subnet masks to better meet the needs and re re requirements of enterprises dependent on how many hosts they have and when when we start to design enterprise networks you'll you'll realize that um that not not every device is in the same broadcast domain in the same network um in the switching um section we talked about vlans and how we would use vlans in the enterprise network so that we can separate our devices into separate broadcast domains making our network more efficient now you have to remember that each vlan needs it needs to be assigned its own network so that means that if we had 254 vlans would we have to be assigned 254 different um 200 different 200 54 different blocks of addresses using the um, class of rules. So as an example, let's say we had 200 VLANs and we had 300 hosts per VLAN. That means that we couldn't use a class C IP address. We would have to use 300 class B IP, um, um, class B blocks of addresses which would have to be assigned to us from our ISP. And that results in a massive waste of IP addresses because class Bs, uh, where's their default Subnomos, a class B block can normally support 265,000 no, plus IP addresses and we've only got 300 devices that means that we would be wasting over 64,000 addresses which could be used for other companies and other businesses which are bigger than us so we can see that by using these class 4 masks by, by using these default subnet masks it's very hard to tailor the size of the address box the size of our network um, to the company's needs it's kind of like a one-size-fits-all method which results in wastage and inefficient use of the addressing space. Okay, so we need subnets because networks can be of varying sizes. So as an example, let's see we have this network over here. This network is um, 100 devices large, okay? And let's see these 100 devices are all going to be um, in the same subnet. What we could do, instead of um, normally if we were thinking about in class or terms, so um, back in the old days of IP version 6, we would assign that, um, let's see that, business, this address block, okay? So this, a slash 24 mask means um, 24 bits of consecutive ones, which in decimal is 255.255.255.0. That means that we are allowed to have 254 IP addresses, however, we're wasting 154 IP addresses because we've only got 100 hosts. So instead, why don't we do something like this? Instead of doing a slash 24, why don't we use a slash 25? Now, a slash 25 supports 128 host IP addresses, which means that we're still meeting the needs of this company over here. However, we're saving 128 IP addresses, which could then, which that address block could then be handed out to a different company. So by submitting, we can save on IP addresses, save on um, the amount of IP addresses we have, and then we can then assign those IP addresses to other companies. And so in real life, the way it works is that once you've done all your private IP addressing, um, the, your ISP will assign you a, a block of public IP addresses, which are yours, and which you can use for your devices. So it, that may be a 16, 24, 30, um, 32, 6,428, like even like five, 600, whatever your needs are, they will assign you a block of public IP addresses. So instead of having to assign you these class of blocks, so let's say you, you needed a 300, by default, or back in the olden days of IP version 4, you, you would have to be assigned a class B block of addresses, which is a whole class B block of 65,000 IP addresses. You only need 300, a massive list of IP addresses. Instead now, they would assign you a class B block of addresses, but instead they would subnet and only assign you a portion of a class B block. So instead of 
assign you a slash 16 address block they may assign you um, a slash 23 which allows for 512 usable IP addresses which means that not only does it meet your requirements we're saving on 65,000 plus IP addresses which are being assigned to you because um, they don't need to be and there's also room for growth as well so we're submitting this is why we subnet we subnet because class rule rules we can't accommodate for networks of, of different sizes um, so as an example if we had a network with 20 devices in a class C which would be assigned to a company back in the olden days of RP, of RP version 4 that supports 254 host IP addresses. Yes, it meets our needs, but now we're wasting over 222, over 230 plus IP addresses, which can then be used for, which if we could save on, they could be used for a different company. So this is the reason why. You have to understand that we're subnetting, we're doing this, that we can save on IP addresses. And um, we will become more efficient with our use of IP addresses and become more smarter as well. And we're able to create networks which better fit the size um, of our actual network. So the way it works is subnets al allow us to accommodate for networks of different sizes. Instead of using a class A, B or C network with a class A, B or C mask, we can create custom subnet masks which allow us to accommodate for networks of different sizes. Okay, so before we can start to throw subnets out there, like start assigning subnets to VLANs or assigning subnets everywhere around our network, there are a few things we have to consider. We have to plan for how we're going to use our subnets. So the main things we have to consider are how many VLANs we have, the size of those VLANs, so how many devices we have in those VLANs, the size of our networks, the expected growth. So do we, so it, as an example, if we have 100 devices in, in a VLAN, and let's say um, that VLAN represents everybody at that branch office. Do we expect that to grow to four or five hundred um, devices, four or five hundred people, uh, up to three or four years? How many WAN links we're going to have? And then, only then, once we have worked out all these um, points and we have um, we have considered these requirements, only then can we choose what class or network we're going to use. See, the way it works is that the way submitting works we we, we start off with a class 4 network in case it could be a class a network class b network or class c network and depending on how many subnets we need and the size of the subnets and expected growth will depend on what um net what class for network we're going to start so as an example um if we need to have a thousand subnets or, or two thousand subnets we can't use a class C network to meet those needs. A class C network, at the very most, can probably support about um, maybe like 128, 64, 32 subnets. Class, a, a class C network won't be able to support that many subnets. However, um, if we use a class A, B, A or B network, they will allow us to support more subnets, whilst also, still ha whilst also those subnets still having a reasonable size as well. And when we get into the math, we'll, we'll understand why class A, A and B networks allow us to have more subnets and larger subnets than a class C. But for now, the main thing is that we have to con consider are these bullet points here. So, we start off with a class 4 network and then all we're doing with submitting, we're breaking that class 4 network into different pieces. Okay, And those pieces are being assigned to um, anything that needs a subnet. So as an, as, as an example, let's say the one piece could could be assigned to um, VLAN 10. An, another piece of, of, of the address block is assigned to a WAN link, another to another WAN link. This one to VLAN 20, this one to VLAN 30, this one to VLAN 40. And so before we can break our, our address block into different pieces, we need to understand how many pieces we're going to need and how big these pieces are going to have to be. And so that's what we're doing when we're planning for something. We have we have to consider. So how many VLANs do we need? Okay, we need. So we've got two hundred VLANs, hundred VLANs. That's three hundred. We're going to need 300, 300 subnets. Okay, let me look. Up, um, class C won't meet those requirements, but class B will. Uh, and again, we'll we'll talk about that in the next video. So um, okay, so now what are the sizes of subnets going to be? Okay, maximum two to three hundred hosts. That could double. Okay, I have to accommodate for that as well. And so 
we have to consider all these things before we actually try to submit anything and then once once we have considered all, all these bullet points and plan then we can choose whether we want to use a class a b or c network normally it'll be a private class a b or c block and then we would be assigned a public class a b or c block from our isp so now let's look at an example of how submitting works so we're not going to get into the mass of how to subnet these examples will just show how we can use um, submitting to make IPA ad IP address assignment more efficient. So, in this um, scenario, we we have six VLANs and two WAN links. Okay, now the uh, and VLAN ten's got one hundred hosts. VLAN twenty's got twelve hosts. VLAN thirty's got five hosts. VLAN forty's got one hundred sixty hosts. VLAN fifty's got twenty eight hosts, and VLAN sixty's got eighty hosts. Now the number of hosts could double per VLAN over the next few years, which would mean that VLAN forty would have to have would have three hundred and twenty hosts, and the number of VLANs we have um, this is a very small business could um, increase considerably. So that so that could increase to two, three, f even four hundred. Number of wireless we have could increase to two to two hundred or or three hundred. Obviously, as we accommodate more sites and the business grows. That means that we're gonna have we're gonna have more VLANs and more WAN links, and so we need to use um, a class for network and subnets to meet these re re requirements. So these are our requirements. What IP addressing assignment scheme? What IP addressing structure can we use to meet those re re requirements? And so the first solution uses class for masks. So the reason why we're using class B. Um, is because the if we go back to the previous slide, the largest subnet is 160 hosts. This could double to 320 hosts. Class C addresses only support 254 hosts. And for easy address assignment and easier hierarchical structure, and for easier routing as well, your company boss only wants you to use um, the same class of IP address. So in this case, if you're using class C. For one subnet, that ha for one VLAN, that has to be used all over your enterprise network. Class B has to be used all over your enterprise network. Class A, all over your enterprise network. And so, it makes routing easier because we can do things like summarization more easily. And your company boss realizes this, so he says he only wants to use one class of IP address. So because of that, because VLAN forty could be three hundred twenty hosts, which is more than what class C can support, we have to use a class B IP address. And as you can see, massive waste of IP address because each VLAN is being assigned a whole class B block, which supports over 65,000 IP addresses. And we, we, we will never have anywhere near 65,000 IP addresses. We only, we're only using a small percentage of the available host IP addresses for, for each subnet. For, for, um, that, for each network that has that, that, been assigned to us. And as you can see, even on the WAN links, which, which only have two devices, we're still using a whole class B block. This is a very inefficient use of IP addressing. And we we're using about eight class B blocks. A massive waste that that's a waste over that's um that's over five hundred thousand IP addresses wasted. Just that. And so we're still able to meet the requirements, but as you can see, completely inefficient use. And so the second solution, which is a much more efficient um, structure, a much more efficient assignment that we can use to meet the re to meet the requirements of the client. So in this case, we're still using class B um, addresses, but now instead of using a whole block of class B IP addresses, so in this case, we use 172.1, the 172.2, all the way up to 172.8. We're now using one class B block, so 172.16, but now we're using subnets of that class B block. And so the second solution is using subnets, but with a single mask. So the way it works, with the single mask so solution, you find out what your larger subnet will be. You work at a subnet mask, which 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 um, which is appropriate for for your larger sub for your larger subnets. The way it works is that this is going to have three hundred twenty hosts. We need to choose a subnet mask uh, which can support. 320 hosts. So in this case, that'll be a, a slash 23, which supports 512 hosts. So we find a subnet mask, which meets the requirements of our largest 
network of a larger subnet and then we we use that single subnet mask for each of our subnets for, for, for so for so for everything that needs a subnet so for our VLANs and our WAN links we use our subnet mask so in this case we're using a slash 23 for VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 30 and 40 50 and 60 and we're using a slash 23 for our WAN links so again this is this is saving on a massive amount of IP addresses so instead of having to use a, a multiple class b blocks where you we're using a single class b block but we're using small portions all around our enterprise network so in, in essence what we're doing we're getting our knife we're breaking that class b block into into smaller parts and we're just assigning pieces of the class b block to our vlans and to our van links and this this is much more efficient than the first solution but it still isn't as efficient as it can be so as an as an example again where's the WAN links we only have two devices why do we need to have 512 usable or 510 usable host IP addresses when we only need to have two same thing with um with with some of the other VLANs if we go back up as you can see VLAN 10 has got 100 hosts why do we need to have 512 510 usable host IP addresses for VLAN 10. It's never ever going to get to the size where we're going to use where we're going to be using anywhere near 500 IP addresses. So, this solution is second solution more efficient than the first solution. Isn't the most efficient? It still meets our requirements, but we can still be more efficient and we can still use a better hierarchical structure and a better IP address assignment than this. This is when the, this is where the third solution comes into play. Now, the third solution again uses subnet masks. So it, we're creating subnets, so we're still using the 172.16 block, class B block. However, we're now, we're now using what's called variable length subnet masking. So all variable length subnet masking is, so instead of um, creating one subnet mask, um, so instead of using sub, instead of using sub, um, subnetting, and then, uh, and then choosing one subnet mask to use everywhere, we choose the a subnet mask, um, based on each VLAN and each WAN link's pers um, pers perspective. So we choose the subnet mask which best suits the requirements and needs of that WAN link or of that VLAN. So as an example, I've backed over here, VLAN 10 needs to have 100 hosts. This could double to 200 hosts. Okay, so now instead of using a slash 23 mask, we're now, we're now using a slash 24 mask for VLAN 10. A slash 24 supports 254 host IP addresses, which meets the requirements for VLAN 10 and, al and allows for growth. However, it minimizes the number of, of, um, of host IP addresses that we're going to need. And the main one thing you have to remember with these masks, which we'll look at in, in other videos, that uh, we, we just can't use any mask. So we can't choose, choose a slash a or slash one or slash ten. We 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 will, we will get into detail about what 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 the slash no notation means and how a map to a um, subnet mask in decimal. But um, when we choose a subnet mask, we we're working in binary and everything increases by the power of two. So as an example, when we borrow, let's say we we, we borrow eight bits um, for our subnets. That means that we're going to have two hundred fifty six host IP addresses, seven bits, which 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 be one twenty eight. So when I'm saying that oh this subnet has 512 host IP addresses, this has 256, 254, I'm not just pulling these numbers out of a hat. These these numbers are based on how many bits you borrow from the host bits in order to make up your subnets. And at the moment this may seem a, a bit confusing, but in the next video everything will be cleared up once once we actually start to see the the submitting math. But if you look over to the wild links now, we're using a slash thirty subnet mask, and this 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 subnet mask allows for two usable IP addresses, which are perfect for our wild links. So instead of our wild links, which only ever which are only going to have ever have two devices on the end, instead of wasting two hundred or five hundred or a thousand IP addresses, we're only we're now creating a subnet which perfectly matches our needs. So we've only got two devices. We're using a subnet which has got four which includes four host IP addresses two of them which are unusable because one's for broadcaster and one's for the network and we have two usable IP addresses matching our needs same thing with the mining over here and we can see the same thing with Wiz and VLAN 30 so if we go back up VLAN 30 VLAN 30 it has five hosts that will that, double to ten and a, a flat 28 subnet mask um, supports one uh, two, uh, Two, four, eight, sixteen. It supports sixteen usable host, uh, six, sixteen host IP addresses, fourteen which are usable, which matches our needs, and now we're only wasting four host IP addresses. So, with the variable subnet masking scheme, 
we're, we're, we're still saving on host IP addresses, the same thing we were doing in the second so solution. However, we're now much more efficient. Instead of, instead of using a single subnet mask for every single VLAN or for every WAN link, we're now choosing a subnet mask on a VLAN and a WAN link basis. So we're looking at on the network and we're, and we're matching the requirements of every VLAN and of every WAN link, which allows us to save on IP addresses and allows us to have more IP addresses available to us when our network expands. So as an example, if you look over here, we're using um, a address block range from 172.16.000 through 172.16.14.255. So we're using this, so we're using this range of addresses, and we still have a lot of addresses available to us. However, it's not as we don't, we don't, it's not as efficient as we would like it to be. We have this many addresses available to us. This is just just, just block that we're using so far. Okay. Which um, so fifteen point two five five, which isn't as efficient as, as it can be. Again, we still have a lot of addresses to play with. However, if our network expands hugely, we're gonna start to run out of usable subnets that we can use and, and usable IP addresses. Then we're gonna have to purchase another class B block or another class C block or something, or use a, a, a different private set of uh, addresses. And so, if we look here with Valbalens subnet masks. We're only using from 172.16.0.0 through 172.16.4.255. So we're using a much so out of the class B block that we're, that we've been assigned. Imagine that this is the um, this is the class B block. This is using let's ask one quickly. Sorry, so let me just draw this again. So this is a class B block. This is using one one something more. This is using Robolin something more. Imagine that with one something more, we're using about this much. With Robolin something more, we're only using a tiny bit. So we're only using a tiny bit of the address block that we have been assigned, and we're, we're saving hugely on the number of IP addresses that we're using for this small network, which means that we will have more summits and more addresses to play with once we start to expand. And, th and this is one of the things I have to think about when we're submitting. We have to think about our growth so we we have to think about how we're going to expand do we have an, enough addresses in the address box that, that we've been assigned to assign summons to any new vlans or any new wildlings that we have and uh, and to and to continue to do so as we expand and so the, the third solution is, is um probably the best solution available to us in order of assigning ip addresses meeting the requirements as well as meeting the needs for the growth as well as saving on IP addresses. So we've reached the end of this video and we've looked at the introduction to, to submitting. We've looked at why we need to submit in order to save on IP version 4 addresses. We, we looked at um, the technologies and features that, that we can use, so NAT, private addressing and, and submitting in order to extend the IP version 4 life space. Once we've covered submitting, I will talk about how submitting and private IP version go goes together. So if you look back at the IP version 4 video, you saw that a huge amount of um, a large amount, a large blocks of of IP addresses were assigned just for private use, and the reason why because they had something in mind. So the reason why they've assigned such a large blocks to private use is so that when you get those blocks, we don't use. So as an example, we don't use one class A block for one VLAN, and another for an, another VLAN. We take one class A private block and we and then we subnet that and uh, and these portions of that for different VLANs and for different WAN links. We've looked at how we uh, we've we've looked at the, the different submitting choices that we can make so whether we're using class of masks, submitting with a single mask or submitting with verbal lens, submit masking. Um and we've looked at how submitting works um from a planning point of view as well. The next few videos we'll get into detail on how we can actually work out the summit so when i'm throwing out these masks how do we actually work out what some of the masks we're going to need to meet the re requirements um of our network and all that and all those sort of things and how do we know which class of masks to use based on the requirements of our network i hope this has been informative for you and i would like to thank you for viewing